What's going on everyone, Austin John Place here, and today I'm going to be going over the most effective way for you to increase your battery in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In Tears of the Kingdom, there's a conversion system that allows you to exchange Zonite and Large Zonite for something called Crystallized Charges. It also allows you to take Crystallized Charges and convert those into Energy Cells. Energy Cells are going to be making up your battery. However, the conversion of Zonite to Crystallized Charges is mm, not good. Large Zonite to Crystallized Charges is better, or you can just go get Crystallized Charges. I like to use my Zonite exclusively for auto build. So I'm going to be going over the most efficient way for you to get crystallized charges in Tears of the Kingdom. First, let's talk about forge constructs located at the Great Sky Island, but most likely you're going to be coming down to the depths here at the abandoned central mine. Anytime that you're going to be seeing one of these little lava flows going on, if you speak to Stuart over here, he's going to then open up shop. And once the shop is open, you're going to be seeing an option of crystallized charges that cost three zonite each. You're also going to be seeing large crystallized charges costing three large zonite each. I want to let you know right now everything that I have found in the game that you need large zonite for which is just upgrading armor there are two full sets of armor the of the depths and the minor outfits that to reach level four each of them is going to require 10 large zonite per piece so three for the depths set and three for the minor set so that's going to be 60 large zonite in total but a large consumer of a lot of large zonite is going to be the divine helms all four of them are going to be available in the game which is the va metal va rudania va rudia and va naboris that have a cool thing that involve parts of the regional phenomenon after you complete that part. If you find that for yourself, cool. I'm not going to talk about it for right now. To upgrade one of the Divine Helms to level 3 requires 5 large zonite, and to upgrade the Divine Helm to level 4 requires 10 large zonite. So 15 per piece per 4 pieces is going to be 60 large zonite in total. 30 for depths, 30 for minor, and then 15 for each of the 4 Divine Helms. So if you're going to 100% this entire game, including getting all of the armor sets to level four, you're going to need a total of 120 large zonite. Hi, it's Future Austin. I did some more research and some more testing by get upgrading some more armor pieces. And it turns out that there are four more armor sets that require large zonite. The three attack elementals, including the Ember Charged and Frostbite, as well as the zonite armor, all follow the same pattern as the Divine Helms. It's going to be five large zonite for level three and 10 large zonite for level four. So all of them are going to be 45 large zonite per set. So whatever past Austin said, so that's fun. Yeah, yeah, don't use it for your battery. Start, start stockpiling. You may be in a position that you want to conserve your large zonite. In that case, we're just gonna be farming large crystallized charges, and honestly, it's pretty easy to do. Being down here, knocking out monsters and actually going to their mining areas is going to be, you know, sort of a test of how good you are at defeating monsters. Well, there's a whole bunch of mini bosses down here that every single time you defeat a mini boss, you're gonna get 20 crystallized charges in a single large crystallized crystal, whatever they're called. There's two routes that I typically make. One is from the Riverside Stable and this light route in the depths, the Stackajat light route, which from this light route, once you head to about here, is going to be a mini boss for you. That's going to be a Frox. Once you head to the left, just a little bit more past this tree line, once you start to get this purple, that's going to be a Battle Talus. He's kind of a pain because he's standing on top of Gloom. And then once we head down a little bit, to about here, this is gonna be a regular stone talus for you. And then we're gonna head down and left more, and right here is gonna be a frox. And then right next to the stable itself, if we look down, we're gonna be seeing this octagon to let you know that there's gonna be building materials here. And right here is gonna be a base level line. -up. So if you have these light routes, which are directly under Hyrule Field, north of the Great Plateau, Taking out these five mini bosses in a row is gonna net you 100 crystallized charge, which is enough for one power cell, which is one third of a battery. And they respawn every blood moon, nice simple route, do it leisurely. To take it to the next level, you can also come to the floating Coliseum, which there are gonna be five Lynels in here. And if you're good with taking down Lynels, that's gonna be another 100 crystallized charge. So in one route, 
coming from the Riverside Stable, coming down here for this Lionel, and then these four mini bosses, and then going to the Floating Coliseum, that's 200 crystallized charge and two thirds of one battery. And you could do it every single Blood Moon, nice and easy. Now there are much more difficult mini bosses all throughout here. Honestly, if you could take down the easy ones with cheaper weapons, then why even bother with the more difficult ones when the reward is still the same thing? Know what I mean? And when I mean there's more mini bosses, I mean there's a lot more. There's a total of 40 frocks that are all located down here. There's gonna be a total of 20 of the flux constructs down here. There's gonna be a total of 28 Hinoxes down here. There's a total of 32 stone taluses down here. And under pretty much most of the stables all throughout Hyrule, there's gonna be a Lionel underneath it as well. Between all of those mini bosses, you're gonna be able to farm up so much crystallized charged. But there's a more efficient bank for your buck. I previously made a guide on farming rare stone taluses for easy ore that respawns every blood moon, but there's four somewhat close rare stone taluses that you can add into that route. If you're looking here at Rito Village, inside of the depths, if you look at this lake right here, just south of this lake is gonna be one of the rare stone taluses. And then if you go through the valley just a little bit to right here in Tanagar Canyon, this area in the depths is gonna have another rare stone talus. So I would recommend making your way through the chasm. There's gonna be a little ledge here that you can land on. See how it's so bright colored? That means it's really high altitude. You can then from that travel medallion, coast down here. And then from this light route, you could coast down here. These guys respawn every blood moon and you can go farm them up pretty easily. Making my way to the top left just a little bit. From this shrine here in Hebra Mountain, this light route, if you head just north of it, you're gonna be finding a rare stone talus right here. And then what's more difficult is if you head south, there's a large cliff face here. There's a rare stone talus on top of that. Only if you have a large surplus of hot air balloons or zonite that you actually wanna make your way up there. Yeah, you can get that one. I would exclude that and just get those three. That's gonna be some diamonds, some sapphire, some ruby, and 60 crystallized charge every blood moon. From here, I wanna let you know that there are some very nice one-time rewards that you can get from being down here for crystallized charges, which are huge crystallized charges, which are 100. So it immediately a third of a battery. That has to do with how far you've progressed in the main quest regional phenomenon. After you complete one of the four different quest lines, then the boss of that temple is going to be appearing in the underground. There are three instances of each of the temple bosses. I'm going to not talk about them, but just talk about where they're located. Here at the Hebra West Summit, directly underground, so from this shrine, this light route, you're gonna be able to see the Wind Temple boss down here. After you take down this Wind Temple boss, there's gonna be a chest that you can collect, which has 100 crystallized charges inside of it. In addition, from the Bakita Stone Grove Skyview Tower, in the depths is gonna be the location of the second Wind Temple boss, so pretty much right about here in the overworld. And this shrine, the Ishokin Shrine, directly underground, there's going to be another Wind Temple boss that is all three of them. Keep in mind, the first time you defeat them, you get this 100 crystallized charge. That chest does not respawn, but some of them have a pretty neat exclusive drop, such as this mob drop that you can then attach to a weapon. Yeah. Fun stuff there. These skull icons are gonna be representing the location of the Lightning Temple boss. So, from Gerudo Summit, once you make your way off of the top plateau into this large overarching area, there's not really a good point of reference, but underground of right here is where the Lightning Temple boss is located. From the Tabantha Bridge Stable, directly south, you're gonna see, be seeing the Illumini Plateau. That's where the Zelda and Sonya tier is. And here's Wash's Bluff. Directly underneath Wash's Bluff is the second Lightning Temple boss. And the third from the Wetland Stable, directly underneath that, once we start making our way down this road, right at this fork in the road, underground is gonna be the third Lightning Temple boss. If you completed the Fire Temple, from Satori Mountain, you're gonna be seeing Rutile Lake, and then directly underneath ground from right here is gonna be one of the Fire Temple bosses. In the Lineru Wetlands, you're gonna be seeing this archipelago of land. Directly under Kaponga Island is going to be a second of the Fire Temple bosses. And then a short distance southwest of that 
here at Quada's shelf right next to the East Hill and the East Hill Chasm. Right next to that is going to be the third Fire Temple boss. The three Water Temple bosses are going to be directly underneath the Upland Zorana Skyview Tower, directly underneath the Hudson construction site of Tarrytown, and the third one is pretty much right underneath the Kaioyu Shrine, right here, right next to the Forgotten Temple. These 12 mini bosses are going to net you 1200 crystallized charges, which is enough for 12 energy cells, or four full batteries. You're just going to get literally a quarter of your maximum battery of the entire game by just going into the underground and taking out these rematches of these bosses, who, by the way, are the same difficulty as when you first fought them. You're now stronger, and they're not, so go for it. In addition, as you probably know, because we're talking about auto build, the Master Koga quest line that begins at the Great Abandoned Central Mine, after you defeated him, you got 100 crystallized charges inside of a chest. That happens three more times in the depths. So you're gonna be getting 400 crystallized charges or one and a third batteries from him. Also, while you're underground, you're gonna be finding Yiga encampments. At these Yiga encampments, you're gonna be seeing a locked door with red, and there's typically one foot soldier walking around. If you defeat him, that unlocks the door. Feel free to go inside of there. There's going to be a Yiga schematic, as well as a chest with 20 crystallized charged in there. And then also, when it comes to random smaller establishments underground, Whenever you're going through the depths, I 100% recommend having your Sheikah sensor on for treasure chests. And whenever you're going to be seeing one of these, I'm going to call them medium-sized mines, directly above my cursor, you see that sort of now sideways hourglass shape? That's going to be the location of a chest. Those chests are either going to be having brand new armor to this game, armor that was previously only available with an amiibo in the previous game, armor that's only available with the DLC in the previous game, or crystallized charges. So as you're going through, whenever you see these smaller abandoned mines, definitely go there with your Sheikah Sensor Plus. I keep saying Sheikah Sensor even though it's just Sensor Plus now. You know what I mean. Your Sensor Plus active to treasure chests, find the treasure chests. Almost every single instance of just a small enemy encampment that's not a Yiga encampment, like wherever you see them mining for Zonite and stuff, there's gonna be chests there, but they all suck. I've looked at the code, I've gone through every single instance, I looked up every single coordinate. While I might be wrong, human error, there's a very high likelihood that every single one of these chests is garbage. It's just 10 arrows or giant bright bloom seeds. So while you're taking out those small encampments of enemies that are all mining the Zonite, don't worry about the chest. It's a garbage chest. The most advantage you have by getting that chest is that you get rid of your Sheikah sensor telling you that there's a chest there. Now, if you'd excuse me real quick, I'm gonna make my way over to this light route up here and this light route down here. Go take care of the two reoccurrences of the mini bosses from the Wind Temple and I'll be back. Very first thing I'm gonna do is mark where the light routes are going to be right next to those boss fights because uh, doing them in the dark is, it's interesting, that's for sure, but you may not want to. <laughs> And that is my third boss rematch. When it comes to actually converting all of these crystallized charges into energy cells, it can be done, I believe, only two locations. The crystal refinery that's above the mining cave next to the Nachoya Shrine, or at a certain point throughout your playthrough, you are going to be unlocking the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower crystal refinery. I don't know exactly when it unlocks. I haven't done much. I've done one quarter of regional phenomena so maybe at that point hi Stuart. this is a crystal refinery I, i'm also a big fan that they're always just like hey this is exactly how many you have we're gonna do the maximum because you're not gonna use them for anything else right cool nice so there you go 
there's going to be some efficient ways for you to be farming crystallized charges in the underground and then fill up your battery meter get that thing to full or you could be converting your zonite which is inefficient or your large zonite which is reserved for other stuff but then also very efficient the choice is completely yours well anyways guys i hope you found this video helpful if you did do me a favor hit the thumbs up button down below if you're new to the channel consider subscribing turning on notifications until next time austin john out